Welcome back. Since it's back to school season, it feels like a good time to take on your questions about learning, I need to keep going, which is really core to YouTube's mission. Is that good? To get us started, Scott asks a really key question. What all even qualifies as educational videos? To me, they're all educational in a sense. But does YouTube view them separately? Great question, Scott, because you can probably learn something from almost any video. In general, we focus on videos with a clear intent to teach. We're also looking at videos related to subjects taught in school or finding or doing a specific job. That could be teaching string theory, great lessons from history, learning a new language. Viewers can find a lot of great content on the YouTube learning destination. I'm really proud that we're the world's largest platform for education and skilling content. Next, Roberto asked, what specifically will YouTube be offering in terms of structured approach to learning? Thanks for the great question, Roberto. One of the ways we're already offering structured learning is through Study Hall, which is a partnership with Arizona State University and Crash Course to help millions of students better understand higher education. Study Hall gives people content that describes how college really works, outlines different majors, and creates playlists mapped to courses most commonly required at most higher education institutions. There's also lots of other higher education content on YouTube, from Harvard's CS50, an introduction to computer science, to MIT's OpenCourseWare, which gives you educational content from thousands of MIT courses. And we're also planning to launch Courses, a new product that lets creators provide in-depth structured learning experiences for viewers. How was that? <laughs> we also had several questions about additional options for monetizing learning content. What can we expect in the future? We're always working on developing new ways to help our creators earn revenue through their content. Learning creators will be able to receive compensation through our new YouTube Player for Education product, which we plan to launch in the coming months. The YouTube Player for Education is an improved way to show YouTube videos inside educational tools, free of distractions, so educators can effectively use YouTube videos in the classroom. Over the next year, we'll be rolling this out through partnerships that bring YouTube into the tools that educators already use. You know, even myself, I use YouTube to, to learn how to do things. A couple months ago, I was buying a new bike and bought it online, had it shipped to me directly, that I had to assemble it. So I went to YouTube and I started to look up the specific bike. Of course, there are many different videos that helped me actually put it together. And now I ride it. Thank you, YouTube. And finally, Jacqueline asked, what's an effective approach to storytelling for how-to based content? And to that, I would add, and how do you measure its success? I can't think of anyone better suited to answer this question than skilling creator Dan Schiffman. On his channel, The Coding Train, Dan offers coding video tutorials that are equally educational and entertaining. And he takes on subjects ranging from the basics of programming languages to machine learning and even generative poetry. Dan? Thoughts on this? Thank you, Robert, for the question. Uh, it's a really interesting and difficult one. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be part of this conversation. So this is something that I'm really trying to work into my videos, which are mostly just tutorials. Step one, step two, step three. But what I try to do is tell the story of me trying to figure out the problem that I'm demonstrating. So I don't just practice it a hundred times and produce this perfectly slick tutorial of no mistakes. I try to show where did I get stuck? What did I have to learn to figure this out? What problems did I ever overcome? I wanna show this tutorial essentially as my journey, figuring out how to build a particular piece of software warts and all, and show my energy and passion for how fun that journey is as well. Now, measuring success, you're adding a second part to this question, which I think is a really interesting thing for me to think about. Certainly, I could look at all sorts of analytics in the same way that most YouTubers do with their videos and their stats. But one of the things that I try to do with my how-to content is invite the viewer to make their own version of whatever it is I'm doing in the video. And then I ask them to share it with me on social media, and I have a form on my website where they can also submit it. So for me, a successful video is one where I see lots of people made it to the end and are trying their own creative twist on whatever is in the video and sharing it back with me. That's how I know it resonated, that people are really not just watching the video, but also trying it themselves. Thanks so much for the question, and I really love to hear from you. Any YouTube creators or viewers out there, reply to me, hit me up wherever you're watching this, social media, wherever, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much, Robert. I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thanks, Dan, and everyone else who sent in their questions. And of course, thank you for watching. And as always, keep creating. <laughs> <laughs>